Obviously, you should probably wet it, not eat paint. Hello there. You are here to learn how to paint the best looking good slash bad. We still can't quite work that out from the comments. People trying to educate me. Uh, guys, in 30K, the Alpha Legion. Now, I didn't need much temptation, you know, tweaking to paint a turquoise metallic marine. My absolute dream. Um, but what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to try and answer the question, can you get an insane result, like for an army level, but an insane result in a tiny, tiny time on these guys and have fun along the way? Of course you can. Um, so it's going to be super beginner friendly. We're going to have to make some sacrifices to get a really good job in a, basically no time at all for a high level paint job. Um, so we're going to spend our time on a few key areas. We're going to restrict it to about 10 paints which is going to really help speed things up. And then just those few key areas we're going to concentrate on, which will be packed with tips and tricks and hacks uh, that maybe you can apply to other stuff that you're working on. So even if you're not working on Alpha Legion, these tips should work out really well for you. If you've got any questions uh, at all, please do ask them below. And finally, uh, let me know what chapter you would like to see me paint in next. Uh, the best suggestion, we will send a paint set of your choosing and a texture palette of your choosing. I'm painting over the Tiger Edition one currently. It has the eye of the tiger, couldn't resist. Anyway, awful, I know, absolutely awful. Let's jump in and get an incredible looking Alpha Legion Marine as fast as possible. Okay, we have Beaky, we have our test squares. Uh, one quick thing, I mentioned this in the last one, if you want a good color reference on where to highlight these guys, let's say you're airbrushing the metal parts instead of dry brushing, which is fine, we're gonna be dry brushing, but you could airbrush it, absolutely. Uh, you can just hold it at different angles under your light and then take a photo of it there and then have that up behind you while you're working on it and it'll give you some really good reference to go with. We're not going to be painting like that though, we're doing the all over dry brush. Let's rock on. Okay, so on our palette we have some bad and Black and then you can use any silver that you like. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a super bright one or not for this stage because we are going to be mixing it with black. Now, one reason to not just use a dark metallic is we want this to be physically less shiny and mixing it with a non-metallic paint rather than using a dull metallic paint is gonna mean that in comparison, uh, the recesses of the model are less shiny than the other areas. So we're diluting the metallic proportionately. So I wanna be careful for the base coat. It's still important to get a good quality one. Test it elsewhere. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the back of the model just in case it's uh, it's no good, but we're fine. I'm going to take my time with this. It's very, very important. I left these separate, by the way. Come on. I go. Gimme looks very happy like that, doesn't he? One of the reasons to specifically use a bad and black is it doesn't have crazy coverage and given that we want this to be more silver than black that's kind of helpful actually. You can airbrush this but obviously if you do you're not going to miss out the recesses like we are which is super important. I will do this in two coats. Absolutely. So if you wanted a darker result you could just remove more paint off your brush. Um, absolutely fine. See this section here looks quite cool actually in comparison to these that are more shiny. It's up to you how you want to go with this and you can always do a, if anything goes too far or you want the recesses to be darker or something like that, you can just hit it with a null oil wash or a black paint wash or something like that. You can get away with being very unsubtle here. We're going to be putting washes or contrast over this anyway so you know, that gives us a huge license to YOLO it and do anything and not have to worry about how perfectionist we're being or not. Make sure you've got it from all aspects. Oh dear, someone didn't clip off that backpack very well. It's battle damage. I'm going to take extra care on the shoulders because they're such an important part of the model. So start on the gun because that can be really shiny anyway, because it's a gun. And then when we're okay with that, that's when we go to the shoulder pads. This is easier on the model. If 
pretty much all done. So there's a really good indication of what you could get if you went more light. So we're making our guy pretty shiny though. This is an overbrush uh, as much as it's a dry brush. So you're hitting everywhere but the recesses. Cool. So one shoulder pad is a little darker than the other. We can fix that with the next step. So I'm pure metallic now. Obviously there's a little bit of the darker stuff still in the brush. One thing to remember is that we're going to be doing multiple washes on this and you can absolutely do a quick dry brush between those washes if you want to pick out the edges in comparison. It's not like you finish the dry brushing and then you never do it again. You can reintroduce it at any point that you wish. Shiny boy. Now, even though we did all these test squares, <laughs> I found a paint that I hadn't realized I had. Um, Pterodon turquoise, which is a really lovely colour actually, over here. Um, I'm going to quickly test out on each foot. We shouldn't be able to see the difference and they're going to get weathered anyway, which one of my preferred methods works out. So the other thing that I was wondering is whether having a light layer of the Dark Angels green in the recesses was a good idea. I don't think we need to, but you could absolutely do that first in the recesses and then you'd end up with a load of interest on your piece. So first step, our ratio was one big scoop, two big scoops, that's athematic blue, it's probably about half a Kellyan. It's a really nice colour. Now one reason for using this mix over the other one is that athematic blue has awful um, opacity. That's not a bad thing necessarily, it's just a trait to be used, whereas pterodon turquoise, the coverage is slightly better. So if you want more of the silver showing through with the multiple stages, Maybe we uh, maybe we use the other one. I think I like Pterodon Turquoise's colour a bit better though, so let's hack this up. Take a bit of the Athematic Blue, drop that in there, and that should soften it up. So this is why it's uh, a good thing to make the use of the fact that the different contrasts have different personality traits. So let's try this one first on this toe. I mean, it looks pretty good. It's a lovely foot. Wash our brush. They're probably going to look identical now, aren't they? They are very similar. Ah, okay then. So, I'm not sure how much it shows on camera. There's a different hue between the two of them, but really importantly, the one without the, uh, uh, the pterodon turquoise in there, the, the middle bits rather than the recesses get coloured more. I think that's important for our paint job. So we're going with the pterodon turquoise and we're dropping in a little bit of the athematic blue, which is this mix here. Really nice colour, so that's going to be what we use all over our guy. Okay, so let's work out what we want to do. Let's pop in some athematic first, that's kind of our base. It's going to be carrying the other colour and diluting it. Two parts of that. Pterodon turquoise. Something of note, by the way. Any of the contrasts that get milky stuff in the bottom, uh, they have more blocky overall coverage. The ones that have less have more washy coverage. So if you want a rule of thumb to work with, it's quite useful. It's more green um, in real life than it looks on camera. I think we're basically going to go with a... I'm going to try out a two-to-one mix for the athematic. Because we are doing two stages here. So that's two parts athematic, one part pterodon turquoise, Okay, so we've got our mix. Let's go quick. As ever, the normal tips for using contrast or washes, end your stroke where you want it to be the darkest, so that's normally going to be in recesses. So if somewhere's looking too bright, you can always drag it away from it. You know, on this shoulder pad, I might be specifically choosing to end it against the little blobs. Gonna be doing a couple of coats of this so it's up to you you know you can put less lamy and medium in there if you want it to cover quicker we're planning on doing a couple of stages though so i'm all right with that speed that's gone pretty well tinted right up this shoulder pad's had two coats 
Now, unfortunately, I did have one mega blob in a really front and center place, which is a real shame. But um, yeah, soak up your mega blobs, guys. Don't let them dwell there, um, especially don't start hair drying, then realize that everything is too late. Now, I've lost a little bit of the sheen, so what I'm gonna do, this is optional, grab pure silver, and we're essentially gonna repeat our last step now. Remove a fair bit, we just wanna hit the edges. Um, as long as it's going okay though, once you test it out, you don't have to be careful of this at all. You don't want much on the brush. If there isn't much on the brush, then you won't get any effects that you don't want. So gently buff this all over. You can go for edges. You could go to highlight those areas we saw when we were looking at it under the light before, like the top of the shoulder pad or whatever. Whatever you do though, it's gonna be pretty quick and it's up to you how much you want this to cover the guy. We're gonna be hitting it with another layer after this. So don't worry if it looks like you've deleted a load of your turquoise and just left it in the recesses. What this is doing is this is doing our edge highlighting for us. So you might actually like that effect there. If you do, your model's basically done. You can skip the next step. We're gonna deepen things up a bit though, so we're just gonna repeat the previous step that we did with the wash. And with this one, I really am, because this is the final step, I'm really gonna take extra special care to not allow pooling. So don't rush it, take your time. It's probably the most important step on the model. And just make sure that you control where your paint pulls or not. If you're worried about this obscuring detail, more medium in there. If you want it to be more opaque, less medium in there. Very simple. Okay, so that's the important stuff done. He's a little bit more sea green uh, than he's appearing on camera, so the green is showing up more. With that one, I missed out a couple of bits. Not just the gun, but the uh, the strapping on the chest and stuff like that. It's still been hit in the previous step, but overall it's a bit more silver than it is blue. So now we've just got some detailing, which I'm gonna do super simply. This is a tabletop ready paint job we're going for. So Dark Reaper mixed with a little bit of black for the joining bits in the gaps and I don't know what we'll do probably just null oil wash the gun and we'll practically be done ready for uh, the fun stuff okay our boy's looking pretty good so I washed the lower section with seraphim sepia that was two washes the guns had two or three washes of null oil at this point same with the detailed areas and that's knocked back the blue because obviously it's pulling in the same places that the contrast would pull so it knocks most of the blue out Darken down a few of the other bits and then we've got the dark reef in the recesses. Now, he's looking pretty good. He's a little bit more shiny in real life uh, because I hit him with some monitorum varnish before I did that. So he's got a slight satin sheen to him that has kind of kept the metallic edge to things. You could edge highlight him with metallics here if you wanted. If you did, I'd mix a little bit of your wash mix in with there just to kind of keep the, the coherency between the edge highlight and the main body of the areas in a good spot. We're now gonna weather his base and we're gonna do it in exactly the same fashion as our recent Heresy Dark Angels guy, and uh, these two colors should look amazing together. So I've hit my base with some monitor and varnish. If you wonder why when I paint my stuff, these don't flake off, it's because of the monitor and varnish step. It basically makes your basing material indestructible, whereas this stuff peels off really readily if you don't do that. So I don't really recommend doing so. I'm just gonna go through these three. Scrag Brown a little bit of deathcore and then a bit of screaming skull if you've only got two you could just take a color like this and maybe even add white to it if you don't have screaming skull available or something but um two or three steps should be absolutely enough and in the middle i'll hit it with some sepia as a wash that method is ridiculous the camera's picking up the chalkiness a little bit too much from the white step but honestly for uh, that method is crazy for getting insane looking results real fast and now we have the planet to land our guy on all right, he's looking tasty. Base is looking tasty. We need to combine these, and I don't just mean we're gonna stick them on. What we're gonna do is we're going to do some weathering up from the bottom of his feet, probably up to around knee height, but you could do it all over if you wanted. And this is really gonna help gel those two together. Now, quite importantly, I'm gonna leave him on this base for this stage. This is because I don't have to be careful around it. I'm not gonna screw anything up. And he's separate anyway, so I can glue him on when this part is done. So I've got some scrag and some deathclaw on the palette. Just gonna dilute it. 
quite heavily, as you can see. And then it's a matter of, you can do this as much or as little as you like, or you don't have to do it at all. But I really like what's going on, as long as we don't bash the camera with a paintbrush, we'll be good. So I'm just going to go over that, concentrate on the recesses, but it's absolutely fine to hit all of it. Then what you can do is, if you want to suggest that it's fading down the miniature, because it's thinned, you can just do that over a couple of steps. And we'll end up with him looking dirtier towards the feet. Areas like this, I'm going to put a little bit in. You know, in my head, this is planet dust that's working its way up. And it really will help outline the details and pop them out a little bit. So you can do this as many times as you want. I'll probably just do it quickly twice. And that'll be absolutely fine. And then maybe I'll dot in some bits of the death claw into some recesses to kind of highlight them when he is. And that'll bring the two main colors of the base to our model and help gel him with his environment. So incredible byproduct of using the monitor and varnish step is if you want to keep your edges like they've been rubbed off, you can just lick a finger or use a slightly wetted brush. Use it very close to the metal, but not the metal. This is the snazziest edge highlighting ever. I'm using a very tired old brush for this, by the way. Look at that. Absolute magic. Hopefully it's showing up nicely on camera. It's a really, really wonderful way to get a very natural effect. Pretty fast. So with that done, it's time to pop on his base and decide about final details. All right, so you could absolutely call it there if you just want to be tabletop ready and done. Solid looking and repeat it 20 times, that's going to look badass. Uh, my camera's liking the blue more than the green. Um, that's not being picked out. Hopefully we'll be able to show that nicely on the thumb and stuff. I'll make sure, sure some pictures have popped up. Now we're on to optional steps here. So I'm looking at this model and I'm trying to work out what I like or don't like. There's a blob here. That's annoying, so I'm probably going to pop some freehand on that shoulder. And to pick that freehand, open up our massive tome. Unfortunately, <laughs> I can't, like, I'm not up to links of chain. I'm not up to snaky things or scales or, you know, incredible serpent motifs. Can maybe do a triangle. So I'm going to find one of these that's easily doable and I'm just going to break it down into its constituent shapes. Although if it's triangle, you know, that's kind of that, it's sorted. Uh, we can't do that one because it's attached to a fire support unit. Um, I only just learned that Alpha Legion are bad guys. I didn't know that Turquoise could be bad. Um, they're good guys in my head. So uh, yeah, I'll probably pick something that isn't curvy, um, or if it is, it's a helpful type of curvy and it's simple for me to do. I'll pop that on the shoulder pad. And the main reason to do that is going to be able to pick something to distract from that blob. So I don't know what shape's going to do that. Actually, if we're doing a triangle, it's going to end up in the middle. Anyway, I'll figure it out and we'll pop that on and we're going to give him glowy eyes. It seems like uh, red or green the glow would be quite good. Um, I think red's not going to look as good against the surrounding area, so we'll probably go for green. Might uh, scratch his gun as well. All right, now I struggle with multitasking at the best of times when concentrating, so um, I'm probably just going to do this and not talk much or sound incoherent. <laughs> Apologies for that. But uh, yeah, it's freehand vibes. So um, I've got my book up here, very, very close to me for me to look at as a reference. I'm going to try and do a triangle really helpfully We've got this little bit of the shoulder pad, and really helpfully, if it's useful, we can just paint the shoulder pad on its own without it being attached to the model. The model might be helpful, but I think this is going to help for access. So uh, yeah, I'm going to use the bottoms of this as a reference. The triangle's perfect, because it means as long as I can put a dot in the center, which shouldn't be a struggle, I can, uh, I can work out where I want to be. I'm using a strong white here. I'm using bold titanium white from Monument Hobbies. It's got extremely high coverage. And breathe. Did a line. It's a good start. Okay, things are probably going to be just about all right. So we've got the bare bones down now. It's just a matter of me not rushing, but not being overly finickety and getting it to a point where I'm kind of I'm okay with it. Uh, I'm never going to get it perfect. So rather than playing and playing and playing and being likely to screw it up, I'll just uh, I'll just call it at some point.
Okay, it's nearly acceptable. I'm just gonna neaten that up a little bit and then we'll call it there. It's not perfect by any means, but you know, once you got 20 due to something that's roughly that shape, it'd look great if uh, if you did want to do it across an army. Of course, you got, if you got trans first, then just use them. I genuinely cannot express how much easier that is not on camera. So when you are doing it for yourself, hunch right up, get your nose in as close as possible and uh, you know, give yourself the easiest job you can. Now, because we varnished this, I made a mistake. So I'm just gonna scrape it off, because I think, yeah. I can kind of redo it a bit. And while we're here, with our cotton bud, Q-tip, for Americans, uh, we, can, we can weather this symbol if we want. Because it's over varnish. wet your cotton bud, I'm licking it. Obviously you should probably wet it, not eat paint. Bit of weathering on there. I think I'm going to neaten up this bottom corner that I screwed up before and uh, we'll leave it there. And we're here going to dot the eyes. Same as our last tutorial. Tiny bit of paint on the brush, not too wet because otherwise you're at risk of flooding. I'm just going to do little stroking motions until we've got in there. And if you need to put your dude upside down or whatever, access. Don't end up fighting with it or painting his nose by accident like I just did. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. All right, it's gonna glow there. We'll be okay. A moot green. I can always drop a wash in to neaten up the edges if things go wrong. We will turn them upside down this time. I always do one eye better than the others. That's made a really big difference though. As for glowing, take the same brush, load of water, dilute it a lot, a lot, and then remove quite a lot of the paint. Okay, that's very forgiving now. What we're going to do is we're just going to take this brush that's barely got anything on it and then we're going to push it towards the eye from the surrounding area. I'm going to do this a couple of times and it'll actually build up quite a nice little glow effect. For me, because the brow is stepped out more than the area, it'll glow more below. So I'm going to hit that more. And you've got so little paint and it's so diluted that you can just blow on your model to dry the layers. It literally takes like 30 seconds total. Great. If you've already done some freehand, then scratching will not be an issue. Same brush, similar dilution, similar ideas, just to pick the details out. I'm using a triple zero, by the way. Great opportunity to hide anything that's the wrong colour. And of course, if you wanted to mix this with your colour that you use, the turquoise, then you could absolutely uh, do some edging on the rest of the model with this if you wanted. Okay, so if you want to challenge yourself and really fancy up your eyes extremely efficiently, this is an optional two-step process. Just done it on this side, looks pretty good considering that it's only two steps. So we've got our turquoise contrast that we used, slightly diluted on the brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this to the back top corner of the eye to make sure there's not too much on there. Cross fingers. It's definitely one of those things that's hard on camera. So you don't wanna to touch all the eye. I'll push it to the back top corner. Do that a couple of times until you've made that section darker. You can use it less dilute if you're confident. And when that's dry, clean your brush off because we want pure white here. Take a little bit of your white. It's the scariest bit. You can do the dot at the back of the lens, the reflection dot. So whatever angle is the most helpful, for me this is probably going to be upside down. 
within that section. Just do a little dot. Drop a guy and break him off the base. <laughs> All right, he turned out great, didn't he? I'm like, I am super stoked with how that model looks. Like, I even play. 30k and I want an army. <laughs> I'm so pleased with that result. Looks phenomenal. You could do the eyes red, small consideration, uh, in which case, you know, you just base it orange, use a red contrast, uh, dot it with white in the same way that we did with the green. I quite like it and it feels thematic with kind of the hues that are, are in the force, but maybe the eyes would be more striking in red. That was a decent point pointed out on Instagram, I believe, by someone. If you're looking to level it up, you've got chipping. You've got scratching. Chipping, you could just use a sponge, a uh, color like Rhinox Hide or something like that. Do check out the color paint tutorial. It's insane. Henry's brilliant. Um, or some scratching with the silver, uh, which you could tint with your um, tint with your turquoise that you've used. You could do some scratching all over it, and you could streaking grime it. That would actually look really good as well. So maybe let me know what things you would add to this to properly level it up. I just think that as long as you repeat this times 20, it's gonna look brilliant in an arm. You look absolutely phenomenal. And you could take the same techniques and apply them to a tank or a dreadnought or anything else you like. That's it basically. Uh, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Give us your suggestions. Any questions you've got, let us know. Uh, if you're the first, this is the first time you've come to the channel, then check out our other videos. Plenty more Horus Heresy content coming out. I am burning the candle at both ends to try and make sure that we can get as much as possible out before the release. And um, yeah, I wonder what chapter we'll be doing next. Let us know your suggestions below and the most liked suggestion will be the next painted chapter. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much for joining. I'll catch you in the next video.